everyone, it's Jenny with the How and Why of Mathematics, and today I want to talk about how to find the slope or gradient of a line if you just know the coordinates of two points on the line. And I don't want to just give you the formula because that would be pretty boring and you'd forget it. Instead, I want to help you understand slopes so well that you can work out the formula for yourself. So slope or gradient, as it's sometimes called, is just a measure of how steep a line is. So this line's quite steep, this line's not as steep, so this one would have a higher slope than that line. And slope is just how many units up or down a line goes when it goes across one unit. So if I go across one unit and go up three units, then that line has a slope of three. And slope is usually given the symbol m, so we would say m equals three for that line. Now if I go across two units, and up six units, well that tri triangle is just a scaled up version of this triangle, so this one actually has the same slope. This one would also have m equals 3. And you can work that out from dividing the rise, which is how much it goes up, so 6 in this case, divide that by the run, which is how much it goes across the 2. So you can work that out by 6 divided by 2, and that makes 3. Now you can also have a negative slope. If I go across 1 and I go down 2, then we consider the rise to be negative 2. And so that line would have a slope of negative 2. Okay, so let's say you want to work out the slope of the line that passes through the points 4, negative 1 and 2, 5. So I'm just going to pop these on some coordinate axes for you so you can see what's going on. So 4, negative 1 is around there, and 2, 5 is approximately there. So we're trying to work out the slope of that line. And if you remember from before, I said that slope was rise divided by run. So we need to work out um, how much across and down it is between those two points. So that's the run and that's the rise. If we can work those out, then we can work out the slope. So you might like to pause this video and see if you can figure it out. Okay, let's start with the run. If the x coordinate here is 4 and this one's at 2, then the distance from there to there is going to be 2 because 4 minus 2 equals 2. And then let's work out that um, the rise as well. So the y coordinate here was negative 1, and the y coordinate here was 5. So there's a distance of 1 going from there to there, and then another 5. So that distance is 6. But if it's going down, we want to consider the rise to be negative. So that's negative 6. And you can also work that out from doing negative 1 minus 5 would give you negative 6. So that y-coordinate minus that y-coordinate. Okay, so we've got the rise and the run, and then we just need to say m is minus 6 over the 2, and that makes minus 3, if you simplify that. Now let's just kind of deconstruct this process so that we can use it for other coordinates, because we're not always going to have a diagram to work from. You might want to like just ignore all of that diagram and be able to work out the slope just from the coordinates. So what did we actually do to figure out these things? For the rise, we did one of the y-coordinates minus the other one, and for the run, we did one of the x-coordinates minus the other one. So you'll often see slope written as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's sort of the official formula for slope. But the way that I like to think about it is that it's just the change in y. That's, uh, that's the delta symbol that's often used for change. So it's the change in y divided by the change in x. And that's really just another way of saying rise over run. Okay, let's have a go at applying that formula to work out the slope between the points 3, negative 4 and 2, negative 1. Okay, so we need to do rise over run, or 
delta y over delta x or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, however you want to remember it, the first thing we need to do is either minus 4 minus the negative 1 or the other way around. You can do the minus 1 minus negative 4. I'll show you both ways. Let's just start with minus 4 minus negative 1 is the same as plus 1. And then on the bottom, if I started with the negative 4 on the top, then I have to start with the 3 on the bottom. So 3 minus 2. And then that makes negative 3 over 1, which simplifies to negative 3. Now you could also have started with the negative 1. You can do negative 1 minus the negative 4 is plus 4. And then on the bottom, because we started with that one, we have to do the 2 first. And that will make 3 over negative 1, which also simplifies to make negative 3. Either one of those ways is fine. But a really common mistake is if you sort of mix up the order. And let's say I do the minus 4 on top first. And then accidentally, if I do the 2 first on the bottom, that's not going to work because that's going to give us negative 3 over negative 1, which is positive 3. So that's wrong. You have to be consistent about which point is point 1 and which one is point 2. So if the minus 4 is first on the top, then the 3 has to be first on the bottom because this is your, your y2 and your x2 and they come first. Okay, I'll do another example. Let's find the slope of the line passing through the points negative 1, 7 and 2, 0. So you might like to pause this video and give it a go and then come back and check your answer. So the first thing we need to do is work out the rise. So that's either the 7 minus 0 or 0 minus 7. Either way, I'll do 7 minus 0. And then for the run on the bottom, if I did 7 first, then I've got to do the negative 1 first. So negative 1 minus the 2. And that makes 7 over negative 3. Now, you don't need to pop that in a calculator or anything. You can just leave it as a fraction. But what we do need to do is bring the negative out the front and check that there isn't any simplification that we need to do. Like if it was, um, if it was 9 over 3, we'd have to simplify that but there's no common factors, so we can just leave it like that. Or alternatively, you could have said 0 minus 7 over 2 minus the negative 1 is 6 plus 1. You, you, can, you can write it as like 2 minus and then negative 1 in brackets if you prefer. I like to sort of simplify that as I'm going. And then that gives us negative 7 over 3. And then again, we just need to pull the negative out the front. And that's it. All right, I'll just do one more example, and I thought I'd sort of throw in some algebra with this one as well. So let's say we want to work out the slope through those two points. So we go one of the y's minus the other one. Let's do let's do three y minus zero. And then on the bottom, so if I pick three y first, then I have to do this one first on the bottom. So it's going to be two x minus the negative x, which is the same as plus x. And that makes 3y over 3x, that simplifies to that. And then you can cancel the 3, so we get y over x, that would be the slope. Uh, you could also do it the other way around, you can do that one minus that one. And then on the bottom it would be the negative x minus the 2x. So that would give you negative 3y over negative 3x, oops, x. And then you can cancel the negative 3s, so that makes y over x. So either one of those ways, those ways is fine. Now if you don't practice this process, then you're likely to forget it. So I have a link down below for a website where you can go and get practice questions for slope. So it'll ask the question, you figure out the answer, so you can do it in your head, or you can work it out on paper if you like. Um, and then you click on show answer, and it will tell you. So you compare what you thought it was to that answer, and then you rate how easy that was. So if you got it wrong, or if you completely forgot how to do it, you click on again. If it was like way too easy, then you click on easy. And if it was just all right, then you click on good. Um, and the idea with this is that it will use your ratings to work out when you need to revise this again. 
So the idea with spaced repetition, which is the most efficient way to memorize things, is that you know maybe you do a couple of practice problems one day, then you do a couple the next day, and then a couple more a couple of days later, and then maybe some more a week later. And that's much more efficient than doing just one huge block of, of practice. All right, that's it for slope. Let me know in the comments if there was anything confusing in this video. And stay tuned for the next one because I'm going to be talking about how to find the y-intercept of a straight line. And if you like this video, then don't forget to subscribe because there's lots more coming up about the how and why of mathematics.